Let's make it a good day. Today on The Jason Show, Kelly Ripa is opening up on the utter disrespect that she experienced in her early days on live. Wait till you hear this. Then, they're back. Come and get it. Your first look at the new Beavis and Butthead movie. And Leslie Miller is back in the house. The Wine Diva is busting more wine myths, plus recommendations for the Easter holiday. The Jason Show starts right now. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah. Let's make it a good day. Welcome to the Jason Show. TV friends, thank you for being here. Audience, keep that love going when you say hello to my sidekick sister, Kendall Mark, everybody. Hi. Hello. 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 Good morning to you. Good morning, Jason. Uh, Kendall has been filling in on uh, another show here at the station, and it's odd I don't get to see you until it, I until the moment we do the show together, which I know. there is a kind of a funness to that right because everything it's, it's so fresh it's fresh like uh-huh. i haven't talked to it. i don't know how your day is i don't know how your night was i don't know if you're in a good mood a bad mood you terrible know? mood awful Ta- are you are you in a good mood today yeah i have candy yeah and i brought you candy i know you did kendall kendall was like a well-dressed easter bunny she brought like uh all of this yeah anyway candy thank for you. you i appreciate it you're my welcome dear friend i appreciate it i didn't think about where i was gonna put my candy once the show started it's all right so it's just, just eat it I'll, I'll talk you eat i want you to enjoy yourself no i don't want our president to be yeah. mad at me again our president marion mim davy kessler we have to wave to her she does not like people eating on television it's no. a it's a bone Faux pas. it's a it's a bone of contention with her but anyway so i I love to share. I, I learned something yesterday. You know, we had uh, our guest Annie Edgerton yesterday. Yes. Uh, who's trying to break the record to sing the national anthem at every ballpark. Mm-hmm. And she's also a Broadway actress. And we were talking to her, and Schwab Arini will appreciate this as well, Aaron Schwab. Uh, Annie has been in, as she told you yesterday, Kinky Boots. She's been in Mamma Mia. Mm-hmm. And she's been in both Broadway and traveling productions. And we were talking about the um, kind of the feeling of like, oh, the traveling shows. You know, if you're watching us in right. Seattle, if Off you're watching Broadway. us here, you know, uh, the, the, the traveling shows, everyone's like, oh, well, it's not Broadway. And Annie made a point yesterday that I was like, you know what, I can't wait to mention this. She goes, you know what? She goes, sometimes the traveling casts are better. Mm-hmm. Hmm. She said, Aaron agrees. She said, and, she, and I'm sitting there, <laughs> Annie Fat, that's why we had her on the show. I was like this the whole uh-huh. time, and I go, uh-huh. Well, why? And she goes, well, she goes, look, it's not every, this is a generality, but she said, look, on Broadway, the actors, you know, it's like almost a machine. They do the show and then they get to go home. On the road, the actors are always in that world. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're more excited. They're more, you know, they're, they're, um, it's a new audience. So it feels fresher. Mm -hmm. She goes, sometimes you get a better cast on when the, uh, on these tours than you do because sometimes she admits she goes sometimes the actors kind of phone it in you know on right. Broadway they're just like okay it's a Wednesday matinee na, 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 na. and she was it doesn't happen that much on uh, what well, does happen but not as much on the road and I thought wow that's right I, I was like oh that makes me look at things a little different you know so if you're watching and you're here or in Chicago or Seattle or whatever I'm thinking, because I, I admitted, I told her, not admitted, but I said, I have sometimes felt that the touring casts are better than, than the same show that I've seen on Broadway. Mm. Um, what, uh, come what may, I thought the traveling cast was better. Mm. Wicked, I thought, you know what I mean? There's been circumstances where Big I- shows. Th- that sometimes they're better when they tour. So Go figure. keep that in mind. I thought it was interesting. Now you know. Now you know, that's mm-hmm. right. Yeah, and Annie, again, thanks to Annie. If you missed her appearance yesterday, we really want to get the attention of the New York Yankees and the Anaheim Angels. She has two ballparks left, and then she will have sang the, then she will have sang the anthem at every ballpark. So yeah, so we just, 
So we put the link to the segment on all of our socials. What you can do, because I know you're mighty, and if the Jason Show audience wants something, girl, they get it. Share that link mm -hmm. and tag the Yankees and, and Anaheim. Because we it's just about knowing people. Right. We got to get in and find someone that As knows somebody that knows somebody that's important right. at the Yankees in Anaheim. Because we're going to make it happen. Yep. We're going to make it happen. Let's get started. We're going to make this happen. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, and selfishly, wouldn't that be great if mm -hmm. because she appeared on our little dog and hey. pony show, she got on that? Yeah, that'd be great. First up, Ben Affleck was on Kimmel. You know, he's out doing press because his new movie, Air, hits theaters next week. We, uh, we're both, I know you're excited. I can't mm -hmm. wait. We're going, I'm going to a screening next week. I'll tell you how it is. It's about the beginnings, if you don't know, of Nike and Michael Jordan's relationship with Nike. Ben plays Phil Knight and actually traveled to Nike headquarters to screen the movie with Phil. Can you imagine? Look. Very, very confident, right up until the point where they were like, we, we think you should go up to Oregon and, and show Nike the movie and show Phil. And I was like, sure, terrific. And then I went up there and I flew up to Oregon and then I went into the theater and all of a sudden I felt like the guy who had been sent in to negotiate with ISIS, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was gonna be like, you know, and I went in and showed the movie and I, and as I watched the end of the movie, now it's a very, listen, we it honors and respects Phil and what he did and making this deal and his bravery and uh, the importance of Nike, but it has fun. I mean, mm -hmm. it's fun. Yeah. It makes a little, I play him. It, it's funny. I tried to be funny. Yeah. It is it funny. It didn't seem that funny when he was in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, like, maybe the thing to do is just run. You know what I mean? Like, but I went out there and actually he was, I have to say, like, remarkably gracious. He liked and, it. And he did. Well, you should be. Right. You've got to take it. It's a movie. It's not a biography. It's mm -hmm. not a biopic. Right. Per se. You, you know, it's an interpretation. And look at the people involved and just how they act and how they normally tell a story. You would, you would assume that, I think. Yeah, these aren't amateurs. Right. These are people that you can trust. Well, mm -hmm. Ben then decided to call his buddy Matt Damon, who, as you know, there's a long-running joke. It's been like 10 years. Matt, Kimmel acts like he hates Matt Damon and never books him. Look what happened. Fine, okay. Um, all right, so you play Sonny Vaccaro, who I have to admit you captured pretty well. How do you approach playing a real person compared to playing a fictional character, okay? Very. He wanted a question, I gave him a question. Wow, that's uh, nice. That's actually a really good question. Thank you. Uh, okay, so the thing is, when you uh, approach any role as an actor, the first thing you do is you're going to want to talk to, if you can, the person that you're going to play. You want to talk to the people around the uh, the person. Oh no! Oh wow! It seems like we're having a connection problem with the Wi-Fi. Matt, can you hear us? Matt, we lost you when you were talking about your approach to uh, acting, I think. I like to spend time not just with the person oh, that I'm playing, but also the people around. <laughs> Gosh, he froze again. That is a shame. We don't get to hear his philosophy about acting. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. I love their faux feud. Yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Again, can't wait to see it. We'll, we'll have a review. Uh, we're going to go see it next week, so we'll let you know. Next in the dish, Kelly Ripa is, uh, if you see her in your socials, there's a reason why. She's opening up in an article about her early days on Live with Regis and Kelly. So in the interview with Variety, Kelly said that she didn't have her own office for the first four years that she was a co-host with Reg, even though <laughs> there were empty offices available. Eventually, no, this is no joke. Listen to this. They eventually they cleared out a janitor's closet and let her put a desk in. And then, yeah. And then, no, no, it gets, uh, sadly it gets worse. So you would think that when Reg left, it would get better? No. When Reg left, they didn't even give her his old office, saying that they were gonna save it for the new guy, to which, to which she responded to the big wigs, I am the new guy. <laughs> yeah, she was the new guy. It was live with Kelly. Just, it was live with Kelly for a good year or two mm -hmm. before they landed on, uh, I think, Strahan. Strahan. Anyway, mm -hmm. she would also have to share, this was the part that we keep mentioning. Kelly said that she would have to share a bathroom 
with the incoming studio audience oh. and even wait in line. Now look, this isn't like, oh, she's better than the studio audience, but she has to host the show. Right. So she's, there's 200, you know, we have an audience of like 60 sometimes at, at max. They have an audience of 250. So she would be waiting in the line and would still have to get in there to pee mm -hmm. before coming out to do the show. Right. So getting a bathroom of your own is the least that Walt Disney could have done for her. Mm -hmm. The least. It was crazy. And she said when she was pregnant, it was like almost unbearable because you have to use the restroom more yeah. when you're pregnant. This was like, grossly shocking the misogyny involved in this. You knew she kind of said back in the day it was a different time, but like that's so gross that they oh. were not going to give her an office and then they weren't going to give her Regis's office. A, a different time and I'm not I'm not saying you, but her saying, well, it's a different. It was just like 2011. It wasn't like yeah. 1950, right? It was it wasn't that long ago. This I, I can't even imagine. And they said that Regis's office sat empty. Yeah. That whole year when she hosted by herself, it just sat empty. Mm -hmm. She said she finally just moved in, which is exactly what I would do. Yeah. Like, no one's in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then she said, once they did get her co-host, she's like, and then I saw them, oh, all these offices that we couldn't use for years because executives might stop by. Then they blew out doors. They made these giant offices for the incoming host, which eventually was Michael. And she's like, I don't blame my co-host, but it was just, almost hilarious to me that this was happening compared to this show where Kendall actually has a desk and I, a I desk. do not <laughs> I actually do not have a desk mm -hmm. and that is a true story right Kendall it's true now look I have a radio studio but I mean that's you know and a studio with your name on the floor but. there is that too there yeah is that. there is that too yeah I, guess I do this, have a desk. I guess this is kind of my desk. Yeah, yeah anyway, yeah, yeah. Type out an email. <laughs> we have a lot more to come, Freds. Go get some more coffee. We'll be back right after this. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I guess a big desk. Hey, don't forget to get tickets to our show. Go to eventbrite.com. Search for the Jason Show. They send you reminders and everything. It's super easy. Welcome back. Adam Sandler is all over the place. Uh, he was on Fallon last night. He's fresh off winning the Mark Twain Prize for American humor. And if you haven't, yeah. And y'all, seriously, if you get bored, go on YouTube and look. Uh, they have, they've divided out all of the speeches. Hmm. Look at everybody's speeches to Adam. It was delightful. Spade was funny. Uh, it, it, go go watch him when you get a moment. Well, on Fallon, he got roasted by NBA legend Kenny Smith. That is our Late Night Rewind. So you had a very funny video that they showed. Uh, here's, no, what, what is this? This is good. No, this is Kenny Smith. Oh, he's complimentary. In <laughs> inside, inside the NBA. He's analyst. saying good things about my game. Oh, yeah. Oh, he said amazing. Oh, things. I just can't wait to see. Oh, it. yeah. Here's, here, here's him talking about your game. Yeah. He is only a passer at this stage in his career, with bad costuming and whatever that. Is that that's not even costume. Oh, he actually is supposed to. This is a real clip of him actually playing. I thought this was a movie set. Who wears a polo and long shorts? Who plays basketball with sunglasses on? Listen to this. If your dog can steal the ball from you, you're in the wrong sport, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Speaking of, uh, speaking of Adam, he and Jennifer Aniston had the honor of being uh, on the Drew Barrymore show. And let's just say, and you know, I love Drew. I think she's a very sweet girl, a very sweet woman. We're the, we're the same age. Um, but Drew can be, and she admits, a little wacky, mm -hmm. you know? She crawls on the floor sometimes. <laughs> uh, and this is one of those very Drew Barrymore moments. Look. Away. Where are you going, like Drew? Why are you what so are you doing? You're bringing I don't closer. like it. I don't Barrymore's like it. Moving. And also, this is like what I do late at night. I just yeah, move yeah. so high. You got that going. I love moving furniture. Yeah, That's my thing. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I almost be rearranged careful. the dressing room. By the yeah, way, yeah, right there. go for it. <laughs> closer, do it. Closer. <laughs> That's what it's there for. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm so hot. I think I'm having one of my first perimenopause hot flashes. For the first time, I think I'm having my first hot flash. Oh, oh that's wow. such, I feel so honored. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so 
I'm sorry. I think I find, do you feel this? Oh, I it's do. It's a really hot Internal body. heat. I, or maybe I'm just that excited. I think you're see. that excited. It's a warm hand. Yeah. Yeah, you got that's, a hot hand. That's good, because if it was cold, that would be worrisome. <laughs> well, the whole time I'm watching that clip, when she starts moving furniture around the set, I think, oh God, director Leo would be having litters of kittens. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's died. If we started moving things because there's uh -huh. lighting, there's lighting and cameras and shots lined up and Adam, the floor director's there. And yeah, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh no! Next in the dish. Oh no. You're very close to me. Oh, I took a bath. The same. Thank you for clapping. Thank you, Eric, for clapping that the host bathed today. Hi. Thank you. Don't touch me. See? Don't That's touch what me. happens when you sit this close to me. I'm just going to touch. That's right. Okay, okay, here we go. Next in the dish. <laughs> so uh, could you get Kindle out of my shop, please? <laughs> Next in the dish, the guy we have to say. <laughs> The guy, thank you, Leo. That's a great slow zoom. <laughs> the guy we have to thank for, crea for creating one of the great American television franchises. It, did Ted write this? Is calling it quits. Mike Fleiss, creator of The Bachelor, is parting ways. Is parting ways with the franchise after more than two decades. He had a hand. Now look, I doubt this, but he had a hand in nearly 55 seasons. When you include all of the, now that is including all The Bachelor and all of its spinoffs. His tenure was not without controversy. You probably remember in uh, 19, he was accused of attacking his pregnant wife. Good googly, oh my goodness. He denied that and uh, charges were eventually dropped. ABC and Warner Brothers are not saying anything about the departure. The truth of the matter mm -hmm. is, the scuttlebutt is, dude hasn't really been involved for years. It's mm. like a figurehead. It's like a courtesy, a vanity title. Right. He's the executive producer, mm -hmm. and and you know, uh, he's the supervising producer. It's it doesn't mean anything. No, and did, hasn't he recently started new shows too, like new spinoff type dating shows? And we've all been on you know Netflix or elsewhere, so they're on streaming as opposed to ABC. But eh, yeah, I think didn't he have a hand in? Ted would know. I think one he got a hand on like one of the Netflix shows. He did, and I'm I'm having a, we called a brain fart. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> not Island. I don't think he did Blank Boy Island, but he no. did another one. That, Ted, this is the part that I you know. chime into our ear and tell Ted's us. Ted's very busy. He's oh, very he's, he's he, googling. He it. can't be bothered with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, The Bachelor will be fine. It, uh, I actually think it should be put on ice for a lot of a little while anyway. Yeah, it's been on. I mean, 50 seasons. Come on. It's a long time. I was really happy for the couple this year. I know everybody else like joke about it, but I was happy for them. I think they're a nice couple. Good. I, I, I love love. I wish the kids nothing but the best. Next in the dish. I don't know why you didn't think I was serious about that. I do. I love. I love love. I love love. Next in the dish. Hey, Beavis. <laughs> hey, we have a new trailer. Hey. <laughs> Paramount dropped the trailer for the new season of B. Yeah, I said it was a movie. It's not a movie. For the new season of Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Let's look at this. <laughs> Come and get it. So much new Beavis. Check it out. So when are you going to put those needles in? <laughs> You're cool, Dad. <laughs> Ow, my back. So much new Butthead. Yeah, baby. My soul is like full of rain and stuff. Uh, Parenthood is cool. <laughs> it's 420. Everyone hold hands. Uh, hold hands, guys. Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, so many all new reasons. Hell, then when it hurt, like, whoa. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, to stay on the couch. <laughs> now let the games begin. An all new season of Beavis and Butthead. So good. We need. You know, you know what? Why it's good is because we just need to laugh right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just, just silly, goofy, uh, just ridiculous humor, and uh -huh. that's you know what we need. That we need that kind of escapism. That's fantastic. I was really happy that you did the, <laughs> but I was unhappy that you didn't do that read with your shirt halfway pulled over your head. Well, I'm not because that's not a real fan. Yeah, then, then that would expose my belly, and nobody wants to oh, see just that. Be your yeah, back. Yeah, I'm not it doing just be your that. Back. No, I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Season two of Mike Judge's Beavis and Butthead hits Paramount Plus in April. So if you have it, go watch that. Next in the dish, 
Filming appears to be underway for the upcoming season of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Kyle Richards shared, yeah, Kyle Richards uh, shared footage from a group dinner attended by former housewives Denise Richards and Camille Grammer. Whoa. And there was a camera crew on site. Now, we can't see anyone in this pic, but there is a place card for Garcelle and Denise. Now, this the reason this is a big deal is there's several things. First, this is right after, you know, Lisa Renna left two, two months ago. So Renna's off the show and Renna fought with basically everybody and including Camille and Denise Richards. And remember, Denise left the show in a blaze of drama. Oh, uh, yeah. In a blaze of Fiery drama. Fiery blaze of drama. And Camille is just, well, she is a blaze of drama. So, I mean, <laughs> and she's an OG. Co mm -hmm. uh, Camille was there holding the diamond right at the beginning. I'm excited. Do you think that they'll be back full time or they'll be like friends of the show? They are going to be friends of the show. Oh. They're not there. You know, Cam I think Camille is so toxic that Andy doesn't want to deal with her on an ongoing basis. And then Kim Richards is back too. Oh, yeah. Kyle's sister. Oh. Kyle's right? sister. This is what I'm going to and I say this with Ringo Starr. Peace and love. Uh -oh. Peace and love. <laughs> I think Kim is a fragile little bird. And I think that she needs to stay far away from reality show cameras for her own good. I really do, and I, I'm not, I really am not being mean. I, I've watched every season of this show. Mm -hmm. This does not do good things for Kim. No. It really does not. She, she needs to just take care of herself. She doesn't need to, she already has enough drama in her life. She doesn't need manufactured, filmed drama mm -hmm. adding to her already kind of rocky, you know. Right. I, I, I haven't watched more recent seasons, but I watched when Beverly Hills kicked off too. And I remember toward the end, even as a viewer and you want the dishy stuff, you were like, I don't think we should be watching this anymore. When the sisters fought, when they yeah, fight. Yeah, it got I, like, it got really sad. Yeah, because so. in the early seasons, if y'all don't know, Kim and, and uh, Kyle, real sisters, they got into a horrible about fight. About her drinking. About I drinking. mean, it was just like, It was oof. bad. It was really bad. Next in the Dish, one of the most successful shows of the 90s and early 2000s could be getting a reboot. The X-Files could be coming back. Okay, the audience likes, okay, the audience likes this. Yeah. So, and this is why you might like it even more. Because the guy behind, he directed uh, both Black Panther movies, may be in charge. In uh, in, in this, so in a new interview, the creator of X-Files, Chris Carter said, Ryan Coogler, that's the director of both Black Panthers, may be looking to uh, revive the franchise with a new cast. In its prime, listen to this audience, in its prime here on the FOX, the X-Files drew an average of 19 million viewers per episode. Wow. Yeah, even, even in its last, I think it's 11th season, mm -hmm. the show pulled six million viewers. To compare, uh, Succession, which we talk about a lot, that takes up a lot of oxygen in the entertainment yes. sphere. Yes, zeitgeist, basically. Succession is considered a giant hit, and it gets two million. Wow. So think about how big X-Files was. Mm -hmm. I mean, Gar now look, will it get that returned? I don't know. But it I'd had, love to it's see an it IP that everybody knows. Yeah, I would love to see it because I, I, was a, a little, I wasn't allowed to watch the show when it was coming out. So I'm a little too young for it, but well, I've I mean, watched it. you were it eating pixie sticks. I literally. Mean, you were a child, um, for heaven's sake. But I think that the tale and the narrative behind it is like CSI or Law & Order or any of those that you can just keep going and going and going, right? Well, and now there's a hype. There's a, yeah, it's going to do well. Mm -hmm. It's time to meet today's JVIP. Who is it? Well, it's Christine Cliff from St. Michael. Hi, Christine. Yeah, Christine says, we're the same age. We're the same age, so things that we talk about, she can relate to. Well, that makes me happy. Thanks, Christine. She says she feels more connected to all the wonderful people and experiences around us by watching our show, and we make her smile and laugh on the daily. Christine also likes when, when, I, when I laugh and I can't stop. Yeah, believe me. <laughs> uh, she gets a Jason Show mug. She's also entered to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our studio audience. A $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World and a $150 gift card to the Institute of Advanced Aesthetics. That's right. They're aesthetics and they're advanced. A lot more to come. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Coming up, the wine diva returns and she's myth-busting. Wine myth-busting. 
Plus, what should you bring to your family Easter gathering? She has the very best suggestions. That and more when we come back. Welcome back to the show. Make sure you get some swag at our swag shop. Go to Facebook. The link's right there. Well, Easter is coming up, and if you're in search for something inexpensive but delicious to go with the brunch, you're in luck. Guess who's here? Give it up for the wine diva, Leslie Miller from Amuse Wine and the fabulous store Sit Better and many other things. She's <laughs> going to be roller skating soon, too. Anyway, <laughs> hello, friend. Hello. How you doing? Cheers. Cheers. Good to see you. You, too. Uh, so this is all uh, your Easter spring recommendations yeah well i wanted to show people that they can really truly get great quality bubbles for 15 dollars and under 20 dollars and under you can really get some bangers here for a great price and this is one of the i love when you say that because i think again people have this perception that oh if i don't spend 60 dollars if i don't yes. spend 70 dollars mm -hmm. i don't i don't i can't get a good a bottle of wine that is just not or bubbles just not true. Not true at all. Okay. In fact, a lot of people go towards the huge brands like Cooks or Andre to sort of fetch, you know, bubbles because they think that that's the only way they can get a great price, and that's not true. That's not true, and we're so going to prove still, it right here. You can still support all these little, little tiny farmers. Okay, where are we going? Well, <laughs> support the tiny farmers. Support the tiny farmers. So we're going to start with what I call the big pizza. This is Piazza Grande, and this is all. Any relation to Ariana? <laughs> Ariana. <laughs> Mocha Latte Grande. <laughs> Sorry. What's it called? Pia oh, I like Piazza the label. Grande. Piazza yes. Grande. Okay. Yes. It is a drier. So I brought a little bubble bath here for us today. Um, a little. <laughs> this is that from is your house? Did you pull that from your bathroom? <laughs> it is. <laughs> I was like, this is so cute. It's so cute. I'm going to put a dog in there. Yeah. Um, so this is a great little dry Lambrusco. That, this is a Lambrusco. Yes. Okay. So even if you're doing, you know, it's brunch season. So this is so great for easy brunch. Great with like, you know, I don't know, bacon, ham, waffles. But also it's really great with pizza. Speaking of the big pizza, I, I enjoy this. <gasps> yeah. Let me tell My you. My voice went down. It I, went I down. enjoy this. And it's thirteen dollars. I enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it awesome? I love this wine. I'll no, tell you. No, this is real good, Leslie. I. Next time you come to your store, remind me yeah. that I like this one. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. Anytime you bring this to an event, people just love it. Now, Cava is one of those, I think, misconstrued sort of areas of the store as well, because Cava is, is that from the middle Spain. One? Yep. Okay. Um, now, Masfi, also smaller, but they produce a rosé and they produce a white. Now, Cava tends to be a little bit more on the saltier side, a little bit more like acid sort of popping here, lemony, bright, really fresh. What is Cava? Is that the region? Cava is also, Cava is the region, yes, and Penedas is made inside of Penida, Spain. There's three wacky See, I'm grapes. learning. See, I'm learning yeah. slowly. Okay. There's three grapes that make up this area. Um, but Cava, as a style, tends to be a little bit leaner, fresher, brighter, crisper. Crisper is what I was going to yeah. use. Uh, a little less sweet, too. Yeah, a hundred percent dry. I mean, it has that really like fresh, bright oh, sort of note. To it. I enjoy it. It's the middle one, the yes. middle label, everybody, right there. That's this the one you want, right must there. Be yeah. So great, and Price. again, thirteen dollars. Okay, thirteen dollars again. Yes, I love, I love this it. guy. I love it. Now, the one that sort of went bananas this year for the holiday was the Henry Varney. Remember, we had sh we had showcased it in uh, Stephanie's. Uh, holiday party. Oh, this is the Stephanie Hansen. We yes. did a holiday show with yes. Hansen. Yes. She went to go visit Leslie at Sit Better in the North Loop. Go support small business. Yes. Uh, go support <laughs> Leslie. Uh, and this is the wine? Yes. Yeah, so this is Henry Varney, and this is from France. And, you know, in France, we tend to go right towards the region of Champagne in the north, and that's an expensive region these days. So this is another 12 to $13. Shiver me timbers. Yes. This is this, so, so good. I now know why yeah. Hansen went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over this. Yeah. I mean, you this could. This is sensational. You could just put a straw in that and, you know, just go straw? to town. A straw? I'm just going to drink it out of the bottle. Are you kidding me? The audience and I are going to share in the break. I'm telling you. <laughs> no, all, all theatrics aside, 
get thee to the store yes. and get that. This is that such a good bottle. It's tremendous. Mm -hmm. The Henry Varney, it's a combination of grapes, Cab Franc, Syrah, Pinot Diani, but it's from the Loire Valley and I just love it. So good. Now, if you're still working in like the under $20 range, these are obviously under 15, but okay. you know, everybody loves a dry sparkling Riesling and this style from Germany is called Sekt, S-E-K-T. And Sekt ends up being like those rounder honey notes, but again, it's dry, so it's perfect with a smorgasbord. Cheese, charcuterie, smorgasbord. smorgasbord. Um, yes. I don't love Riesling. I do enjoy this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, and then if you do like sweet, okay? Yeah, this so is now for sweet have, people. Now you have a little dessert board. Um, this is Ilio Perone. Ilio Perone? Ilio Perone. And, I'll let sorry. you say that, okay. <laughs> and um, this is actually a combination of brocchetto, which is a red grape, and moscato. But this is another one for $18. Oh, I love it. It's like strawberry cream. It is. It's very sweet, but if you like sweet wines, oh, so this good. will make mm -hmm. your ears flutter. Mm. Yeah, mm. it'll dance on your palate. Wouldn't it be good with donuts? It would be good with donuts. Oh, donuts, yeah. chocolate, you name it. Mm. Sure, Leslie, whatever you yeah. want. <laughs> uh, again, if you missed any of these recommendations, do not worry. We'll be posting this on our socials a little later. Uh, now, when we come back, this you guys had a really great response to this the last time Leslie did this. She is busting more wine myths. Oh. Things you've been told your entire life is a lie. Yes. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Holy crap. This I know. Henry. I know. Oh my. Welcome back. By the way, there is an audience revolt going on. Uh, they, uh, <laughs> They are, they are not happy with Leslie, and they're certainly not happy with me uh, because they can't have any wine. So you know, I, I know. Look, I know. Look, if HR wasn't here, I would give it to you. But anyway, hey, Leslie, uh, Leslie Miller is back, and it's time to continue our series: Wine Myths Exposed. That's right, and it's as dramatic as you think it is. Okay, uh, let's start with this first one: sulfites in wine. Talk to me. This is the most frequently asked question that I get every single night. This is such a myth. People say, I can't drink wine because of the sulfites in wine. I'm sure you've heard it. Um, you know what? There's more sulfites literally in things that you would eat, French fries, dried, dried fruits, cheeses, charcuteries, things like that, than there are in an entire bottle of wine. You are not allergic to sulfites. If you are, you are 1% of the world's population. World's you are population. Very special. And it's yeah. real. It's real. You would be asthmatic. You'd have skin rashes to food. There would be so many severe things going on with your health. Because people go, oh, it gives me a headache. Yes, and this is not true. A lot of times you have to think about the dehydration of alcohol. Let's start there. Yeah, that's not, and the sugars can give you a headache, right? Sugars can give you headaches too if there's added sugars. You know, I love to focus on these wines that are very natural in the sense that there's nothing added to the wine. Yeah, sometimes yeah. those blends, oh, they're just nothing but sugar. Yeah, you know, the apothic, whoop, the. <laughs> Those wines, they're just a little bit more problematic, maybe. God, I love you. I love you so much. Okay, uh, number two myth. Silver spoon in champagne, uh, uh, putting a silver spoon upside down in your inside your champagne bottle will keep the bubbles or fizz in your wine until the next day. This is such an old school hospitality trick that people used to say, you know, you open a bottle of bubbly, obviously the cork doesn't fit back in, throw a spoon upside down and your bubbles will stay. Stanford busted this myth, people. Stop it. Just stop. There's a, just stop, stop it. it. Stop it. Just drink all of it. <laughs> or you invite Chase, you invite Chase those, and I over. Those ladies right there. <laughs> invite them to your house. <laughs> invite Jason and I over. We'll help you with this bottle. Or row one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the other thing I love to do too is just throw saran and a, a, a rubber band around it, but the upside down, that metal does not react to the bubbles. There's, that's false. Okay, number three, the, this is uh, the next uh, final myth. Drinking the second cheapest wine on the wine by the glass <laughs> list in a restaurant 
is secretly picking the best wine. Okay, so I I did, have never heard this. Well, I'll tell you who has heard this. Uh, I Executive did this producer for Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> yes. I did this for Jeff and Jeff goes, "What are you talking about, Les?" And I said, "You know what? There there's no real like formula that a wine director puts together that says, "Okay, I'm going to secretly put the best wine at the cheapest or second cheapest." So, you know what? Just go for it. But go to a place that you trust, that you think that would actually deliver a great product for what you like. Wait a minute. So Jeff is saying <laughs> yeah. that the second wine is he, the secretly the best wine. He says. No, what? No, he says. Well, you don't want to pick the cheapest, Les, because oh. then you don't want to be cheap, right? Oh. So you got to pick the second cheapest. Oh, <laughs> so the second. Because you don't want to be that person. You don't want to be like, that person. Could I have the Boone's Farm, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Nope, that's not it. When you know, Jeff goes to Chili's, that's what he orders. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so that is false. But you know what? There, you know, ask questions when you head to a restaurant, and yeah. you know, really focus on what you like, and see if, and give them a price point. Say, I want to spend, you know, eight dollars a glass. Exactly. It's a good restaurant. They'll tell yep, you. That's give it up for Leslie, everybody, for more information. <laughs> Go to amusewine.com and like I said, stop by Leslie's Wine Shop in the North Loop. Uh, sit better. It's fabulous. You may see me there. Uh, we'll be right back. Back after this. Stay with us. <laughs> my husband reminds me that you bought a case. Not that wine. Like yeah. Welcome back. We have two fun game players. This is going to be good. Well, uh, thanks to beauty treatments, Botox and skin care, it's hard to know really how old some of your uh, favorite celebrities actually are. Today, it's time to find out. Roll it, Leo. It's game time. Here we go. Okay, so uh, today's game, we are going to be putting you to the test with a game called Who's Older? I'm going to show you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm going to show you a pair of celebrities, and you at home have to guess and hear in the studio which one is older. Playing today, give it up for Pat and Barb, everybody. Okay. Now, dear friends, Pat and Barb, you're going to be looking over here to what we call our three by three, our jumbotron over there. And the moment Leo puts up the, uh, uh, well, we're, well, I'm going to tell you first the two options. Are you ready? And buzz in the minute you know. Who is older, Halle Berry or Julia Roberts? Julia Roberts. Oh. Oh. Uh, Barb. I would say Julia Roberts. You say Julia Roberts? No. Oh. No. Oh. Halle Berry is older. Oh. Halle is 56. Julia is 55. Julia oh. is 55. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> Hands above buzzers. This next one. Ryan Reynolds or John Oliver? Pat. John Oliver. No. Oh. <laughs> Shockingly, Ryan Reynolds is older. Ooh. Ryan is 46, and John is a very young 45. <laughs> Look at that. I know. Yeah. Did you? Could you believe that, Barb? No. I know, no. Barb. Right? <laughs> I love John. Okay, here we go. Next one. Share or Sally Field? Wow, Barb. Yes. Share. You are right. Share. Yeah. 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 <laughs> She's, she's turning back time. She's 76. <laughs> yep. And Sally is 76. But listen to this. Cher was born in May. Uh, Sally was born in November. So there we go. They're basically the same age. Yep. It's just like Jeff and me. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Hands above buzzers. Ben Affleck or J-Lo? Uh, someone's... Is it, uh, I both Oh, I think... Uh, Pat, you hit first. Yes. Hmm. I know I want to say Ben, and then it'll be J-Lo. <laughs> okay, we'll go with Ben. No, oh, J-Lo. Oh, see? J-Lo. J-Lo yeah. is 53. Ben just turned 50. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. But I would argue J-Lo yeah. looks better. Oh, okay. Yeah. Next up, another couple. Meg Mullally or Ben or Nick Offerman. Pat. Uh, what were the names again? <laughs> Megan. <laughs> Megan or Nick? Oh, Megan. Yeah. You are right. Finally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Karen, uh, Megan, Karen. Who the hell still hit the, the buzzer? I didn't touch Bye. it. I didn't touch it. Uh, Megan is 64 <laughs> and Nick is 52. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I didn't know that's yeah, look at that. There we go. You get it, Megan. Okay, here we go. Mark Wahlberg or Matt Damon? Good lord, Barb. Yes. <laughs> Which one? Um, Mark Wahlberg. 
no, Barbara. Oh. Matt, Matt Damon is 52. Darn. Mark Wahlberg is 51. Okay. Now, now let's see if you get this next one. Here we go. Rob Lowe or Russell Crowe? Pat. I'm going to go with Rob Lowe. You are right, Pat. Yes. yes. Shiver me good. timbers. Uh, Rob is 58. So is Russell. But Rob was born one month before. One month before. I knew that. You knew that, Pat? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Next one. Milo Ventimiglio <laughs> or James Corden? Barb. Milo. You are right. Oh. You're right, Barb. Milo is 45. James Corden is 44. Next. Dwayne The Rock Johnson or Vin Diesel? Pat? Vin Diesel. You are right, Pat! Oh, wow. Holy crap, Pat's on a roll. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dwayne The Rock is 50. Vin Diesel is uh, 55. And they can't stand each other. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay, here we go. Chris Rock and Adam Sandler. Barb? I would say Chris Rock. You are right. Chris is older. Chris Rock is 58, and Adam Sandler is 56, okay? Next one, Leo, go ahead and put it up. Sarah Jessica Parker or Nicole Kidman? Pat. Nicole. No, oh. no. Sarah Jessica Parker just turned 57, and Nicole yeah. Kidman is 55, 55. Okay, next one, Selma Hayek or Paul Rudd? Barb? Selma Hayek. You are right. You are right. Yeah. Salma Hayek is uh, 56. Paul Rudd is a very young 53. We got a, uh, one more left. Here we go. George Clooney or Steve Carell? Pat? Ooh, we'll go with Carell. No, Pat. No, Pat. Uh, no. George Clooney is 61. Steve Carell is 60. That is our game. But congratulations to both of the players. Thank you, Schwabri. They both go home with the Jason Show mug valued at 450. <laughs> with wine or without wine? And That's the wine, right. And the, and the we'll, wine. And the wine. We'll we'll get take care of that later. Yeah. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Stay with us. See Leslie for the wine. She's right over there. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Well, if you want to take the show home with you, and my goodness, who doesn't? The Jason, right, Kendall? Yep. That's right. You uh, you can take us home. I mean, we're cheap. Uh, that's right. <laughs> I'm going home with these ladies uh, in a little bit right there, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Jason Show Swag Shop uh, Swag Shop offers mugs, water bottles. You know I love that water bottle. T-shirts, sweatshirts, and more. If you aim your camera right now at the QR code, it'll take you right to the shop. But we've also made it easy. It's also on the Jason so Station Show socials. That's right. And if you come to the audience, we have stickers now. It's right in the back of the chair. Yeah. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Hey! Jason Show Swag Shop. Try to say that. <laughs> they look so happy. Mm -hmm. It's time for the surprise goodbye. You know how this works. Kendall and I have no idea what's in the segment until we read it right now. Most pregnant women know what it's like to get certain food cravings, but for one mom to be, it's Fruit Loop cereal. And her husband surprised her with just that while picking her up from work. Let's watch. <laughs> <laughs> How gosh darn sweet is that? That's just so sweet. The husband says he knew he would catch her off guard, so he decided to record the reaction. Look at her. Fruit Loops. You think she, like he gave her a trip or something. It's just a bowl of Fruit Loops. But I guess, you know, that'd be like if Colin gave me Long John Silvers if I got in the car. You know what I mean? I love, oh. With the crunchies? I love me. Oh, the crunchies. The crunchies. Some chicken planks. Ooh. Oh, girl. Chicken, chicken no, chicken planks. You like that Long John smell? Okay, like whatever. Do they walk the plank? They're mad. They still don't have their wine. Yay! Tomorrow. We love him. Tomorrow, comedian Greg Gass will be here, uh, plus producer Ted interviews a WWE legend. Yes, he does. How did that get approved? Anyway, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a good day, bye, everybody.